Hi, uh, quick warning. So when I came here to record this video in wonderful, sunny Oceanside, California, uh, I got here and it was raining. Um, and the wind was very loud. So there might be a lot of subtitles on this video. I also don't have a microphone with me because I am outside. So uh, apologies in advance. Um, with that said, let's get to the video. This is my Backbone one. It's the first controller from a company called Backbone Labs. Now, uh, don't let their admittedly very pretty website and very good Instagram marketing fool you. This is actually a really, really good product. Now, hold on. I know that those two sentences kind of contradict each other, but nowadays, when you look at a product that has a really good marketing campaign or website, you think of something like Raycons, which are all hype, but don't really deliver. There goes the sponsorship. This is not like that. This controller is really, really good. And for $100, you're absolutely getting what you pay for, if not. Come on, man. So for a little bit of background, uh, this is my controller. I've been using an iPhone 11 Pro to test it. Uh, I don't have an iPhone 12. And um, the screen size and storage capacity and all that are definitely gonna come into play here. So just for a quick overview, it's the 11 Pro, the smaller one, uh, 64 gigs of storage, and um, yeah, it's just your basic iPhone. Their website says this thing goes down to the iPhone 6S. Um, I doubt that would be a good experience, so if you have one of those, your mileage will vary. But for me, uh, this thing is great. The Backbone One is a lovingly crafted controller. It feels amazing in the hands with some incredibly clicky face buttons. Really really good thumbsticks, and triggers that feel pretty good. Sliding the phone into this thing is remarkably easy, although I'm not entirely sure how they want you to do it. The way that I figured out how to do it was to like pull the controller apart, seat your phone in the top half, and then plug it into the bottom half. That method works for me, and doesn't really bend the lightning cord on the bottom, so that's the method that I'm going with. So, onto the controller. The thumbsticks are astonishingly accurate with very precise movements being registered really accurately. This is for both thumbsticks. This means that you get some really, really accurate controlling on the controller this small, which is really helpful for games like Call of Duty Mobile, which involve very specifically aiming and moving. This is actually a feature that the Nintendo Switch, at least the Switch Lite, doesn't share, as their thumbsticks only kind of kick in about halfway through moving. This doesn't have that problem. The thumbsticks work very accurately all the way around. This controller has an Xbox style layout with the thumbstick and keypad being on the left and the face buttons and thumbstick being on the right in that order. Underneath those we have the backbone button, the screen share button, and then two play or pause buttons that I'll get to in a minute. The triggers are a little bit disappointing. The bumper's feeling really nice and clicky, but the triggers feeling very mushy. This is because they're variable triggers, which means that if you push it down just a little bit, that'll be registered as just a little bit of a push. While this works really well for larger controllers with bigger springs and more travel, on a controller like this, I actually wish they would have gone the approach to Nintendo tone, which is just popping them both the buttons. This allows for a lot clickier feel on those thumbsticks, and they don't feel as mushy. There's not really enough room to warrant having any variableness here, so it seems kind of wasted and just makes them feel mushier than they need to. The D-pad feels really not good. It's very mushy and Honestly, way too big for this controller, and it just kind of feels bad to use. There's no edges really defining where the end is, and it's rounded, which makes it feel kind of bad under the thumb. It's definitely not the best thumbsticks they could have gone with, and on the backbone too, I hope they choose something more like the squared off edges on the Nintendo Switch. The controller feels really good in the hand, with my fingers knowing exactly where to go, putting my thumbs on the face buttons on the left thumbstick, and my fingers on the triggers. The controller also functions as a pass-through charger and as a headphone adapter, which is really nice because the iPhone obviously doesn't have a headphone jack anymore and gaming can definitely drain your battery. It has a nice indicator on the backbone button to tell you when it's charging and recording as well. Those definitely aren't necessary but are very nice quality of life features and I'm really glad they're here. I actually prefer the feel in the hand of this controller to that of Nintendo's softwares because this controller has rounded bottoms, meaning that my fingers fit much better. It feels like I'm holding something that is a controller rather than just holding a phone. It makes it a lot easier to play, and I definitely feel the wear on my fingers a lot less than I do on the Switch. Overall, I'd say this controller is almost perfect, with pretty much everything working exactly as I expected. Almost. 
controller does have some pretty big failings, and they all come in the buttons on it. Yes, I did touch on my D-pad complaints earlier, but that's not really an issue as much as it is just an annoyance, as I'm sure that I can get used to the D-pad fairly quickly. The issues that I have are with the control buttons on the bottom, being the backbone button, the screen share button, and then the two pauses. What are these supposed to mean? See, on regular controllers, you have a certain select set of buttons, which will, depending on the game, tell you what they do and perform different functions. This controller has hamburger menu and three dots. What do those do? See, it's not a standard set of controls, and a lot of games on iOS still use start and select, so trying to figure out what those buttons do is really confusing and definitely messes with the muscle memory of a lot of gamers. It's Nobody really expects that. So you find yourself pushing one button, and if it doesn't do what you want it to, pushing the other button. And if that doesn't do it, then you have to go into the game settings and figure it out. And I would have much rather had them labeled them with start and select, or plus or minus, or just something more clear and standard. The backbone button and screen share button are really easy to understand and serve their purpose very well, as the backbone button very obviously takes you back to the app, and the screenshot button is pretty much the universal screenshot icon thanks to them using Google's material icons for this. Just the play pause, or well, whatever these are, definitely are more confusing and do not add to the experience of this controller. It's not a deal breaker, but the backbone too needs to improve on it. So honestly, this is a really good controller. Everything about it feels great except for those buttons on the bottom. It has a great hand feeling, thumbsticks are really good, buttons are clicky aside from the D-pad, and the headphone jack and faster charger are really nice. But a game console isn't a game console with just a controller. You also need the software behind it. Two kinds. A game interface and, well, games. So we're going to talk about that first one first. The Backbone controller comes with its own companion app, it's the Backbone app. As soon as you plug in the controller and download it, it asks you to sign up using an Apple account. Then you register a username, put in your phone number so friends can find you, we'll get to that in a minute, and pick an icon. Then you're in the menu. Open any game on your phone and then push the Backbone button and it will register as a game in the Backbone menu. So let's talk about the Backbone menu. It's a really good list and an easy way to get to all of your games. Being fully controller navigatable, having really nice subtle haptics, and just feeling really nice to use. It makes your iPhone feel more like a game controller than like a smartphone with the game controller attached to it. It's a really, really good app, and Backbone Labs have done a great job making this work. It also has something called Rooms, which is just your block standard chat party. The only problem with these is that there's not many people that I know with a backbone control, meaning that oftentimes these rooms are always empty. It's a really, really nice feature that I hope will catch on if the controller gets more popularity, but right now, you might as well just use Discord. The screen recording capability is really nice, with you being able to see your screenshots and share them to various sources in the backbone menu. For some reason, the only options are messages and Snapchat, though, which doesn't really make much sense, as most gamers are going to share to Twitter or Facebook. I don't know why this is the only options they have, but it seems like it would make a lot more sense to have some more stuff there, instead of hiding it under a thing that you have to touch with your finger, as most of the other interface elements on this controller are, well, controller accessible. Underneath that, you have your settings menu, which is your regular settings menu, it gives you control over a lot of things and lets you test the inputs on the controller. It also takes you to the settings menu where you can remap buttons, which is really nice because I came from a Switch and seeing as something this small makes you believe that the B and A button should be swapped, but you know, you can change your controller to be however you like using the iOS system settings. The backbone doesn't have a game overlay as iOS will let it, we'll get to that in a minute too. So when you push the backbone button, it will bounce you between the backbone menu and the app you're using. This is a really nice feature, and I know that it's just about as hacky as they can get around the iOS limitations, but it works really well, and I do like it a lot. The menu's really good, and it's really easy to add a game to it. The only thing is I haven't figured out how to remove a game, which seems like kind of an important feature, but uh, it's software, so hopefully they'll add it in a future update. The interface is really good, especially on smaller iPhones, as it looks really nice and is really easy to read. It feels a lot 
like it was designed for a screen this small, which is something that not a lot of mobile gaming manufacturers can say. I mean, the only interfaces that I've really seen that come this close to being really good on a small screen is that of the Switch and, well, this one. So, let's talk about a game controller. You have to talk about the software that's on it. And for that, we need to talk games. Second part of the game controller. The backbone doesn't have too many of those. And that's not a fault of the backbone, it's a fault of the platform that the backbone's on. And that's going to be a growing trend in what we're about to see. iOS does have a lot of hidden gems as well as a lot of really good console ports like Fez, Minecraft, Journey. Like, there's some good stuff on there. But not enough to call it a console. Think about it like this. If you're looking for very surface level games like, uh, I don't know, Wonder Box being a dungeon crawler, Gris being a really good story game, or Minecraft being Minecraft, or Call of Duty being a shooter. They're all on there, but as soon as you try to look for more than one, you start to get a little bit lost. I really like psychological horror games, but you're not going to find that many of them on the iPhone. There are going to be a lot of story games, like, say, Oceanhorn 1 and 2, but you're not going to see a lot of horror games. There's like Five Nights at Freddy's and that's the game. As someone who likes hard-hitting RPGs like Undertale and Omari, you're not going to find that many of those on this platform. And that's really disappointing, because a game controller and a game console is nothing without the games that run on it. And if you don't have any games to run on it, well, your controller can only be so good. Now, I do partially blame this on Apple. Actually, mostly blame this on Apple. Apple Arcade is seen as a family-friendly service, with a lot of the games being not at all scary and just kind of stuff you'd expect to find on Nintendo platforms, but nothing really groundbreaking. And that's really unfortunate because it just seems like a bad value. So, while there aren't that many games on this platform, there still are some really good hidden gems. And before we totally throw away the lack of games as a reason to not invest in the backbone, well, let's talk about those really good games. Rapid Fire Game Reviews. 3, 2, 1. Minecraft. It's really good. It's Minecraft. It works really well on here. It's just as good as the console versions because it is the console versions. It's Bedrock. It's the same everywhere. If you don't know what Minecraft is, where the hell have you been? Wonderbox. Wonderbox is a really good sandbox dungeon creator. It's kind of like Zelda, but uh, better. I let you make your own dungeons, it lets you play third-party dungeons, it lets you play original dungeons. Uh, it's really good, and it looks really good on this platform, especially for a device that doesn't have active cooling. It's a really, really fun game, and it's honestly one of the standout titles on Apple Arcade. Oceanhorn. Oceanhorn is a Zelda. It's just an old Zelda. Think Skyward Sword Wind Waker. It's just like one of those, just running on the iPhone. It's pretty good. Uh, it does have some lag spikes sometimes, because it's not an iPhone-native platform like Wonderbox, but it's pretty good, and if you want to get a Zelda fix on an iPhone, that's the way to go. Okay, real quick, uh, speaking of performance, note that iOS exclusives will run better on the iPhone because they've been optimized for it. Games like Oceanhorn are obviously going to run worse because they are made in an engine that runs on everything, versus, say, Wonderbox will run really well on the iPhone because they've tested it on there, uh, made it for the iPhone specifically. It's going to run a lot better because it's designed for iPhone. Okay, uh, Inmost. Inmost is a really good psychological horror game, but not really, it's not that scary. But it's a game about loss, it's sad, which is what I like. It's a really good story game, and I highly recommend it, also on Apple Arcade. And The Last Campfire is a really good puzzle game. It's got story, it's got puzzle, what else do you want? It's, if you want a puzzle fix, it's cross-platform, so you might find it on other platforms where it looks better, but if you want something to play on the iPhone, The Last Campfire is really good. So, all of those games will seem different on the surface, but as soon as you look for more games like them, I mean, let's say you're looking for more Zelda-like titles, you'll find Wonderbox, Oceanhorn 1, Oceanhorn 2, that's it. But say you're looking for racing games, you'll find Asphalt 8, Sonic Team Racing, that's it. But say you're looking for story games, you're gonna find Inmost, that's it. There's not a lot of variety in the types of games you can get on this platform, and that is really disappointing because as a gamer, I like to play different kinds of games, and not seeing a lot of styles represented on this platform is very disappointing. Before we wrap up, I got one more thing to talk about. 
MFI. If you don't know what that stands for, it stands for Made for iPhone. It's Apple's program to help industries create products that link directly to the iPhone using things like the lightning connector or make iPhone cases and things like that. MFI is Apple's way to, if I'm being completely honest with you, get a cut of anything that's made for the iPhone. But it's also the biggest detriment to the backbone that I've seen. So real quick, let's take a look at some of the backbone's biggest flaws. No overlay for controlling the backbone while you're in game. You have to bounce between the backbone app and whatever game you're playing to be able to change settings. Screen share is weird. Screenshots are also weird. You have to hold it down to take a screenshot, but you can press it to record and it has this weird clunky menu that you have to touch the screen for to start recording. Some interface elements that are controller specific just don't work with the controller. Most of the operating system doesn't work with the controller. And I'm sure that Backbone would love to fix all of these issues, but they just can't. Because Apple won't let them. It's not their fault. It's not their fault at all. It's just... Apple's locked down the iPhone and its interface so much that developers aren't really allowed to do anything outside of the sandbox their app allows them. So a lot of the... So a lot of the bad interface on the backbone is a result of Apple's stranglehold on the iPhone, not of the backbone itself. So, I'm not saying that that will change your mind on the things that are wrong with this product, because while it's not their fault, they are still faults. But I am saying that they're trying their best, and if everything else about this product is what you like, and you really want to game on your phone, this is the best you're gonna get, because it's really, really good. So, is it worth the $100 price tag? Yes, <laughs> it's really good. The app is fantastic, the buttons feel great, the gripes that I had could either be fixed in a hardware revision and aren't really necessary to play games, and or they could be fixed with some software updates to the app. Everything else is a fault of the iPhone itself, which is the platform that was chosen. So, if you want a game on the go and don't want to buy a Switch and think that your phone will be the best that you can do, do it. It's great. But um, if you have Switch money and Switch game money, that's probably what you're better off with. A Switch Lite. It's really good. And if you want something for your phone or just a new gaming experience in general, yeah, it's only a hundred bucks. Just don't expect it to be a full console. At least not until Apple gets their stuff together and lets developers have more fun with the software. Thanks for watching. Um, if you enjoyed this video, um, leave a comment, leave a like. Um, subscribe if you want to see more like this. Boosted reviews coming, I promise. Um, if you were thinking of getting a backbone after watching this review, uh, I have an affiliate link in the description. It gets me like five bucks app store credit to buy a game. It's their like affiliate. Everybody gets one when they make an account. I don't know. I just it's a backbone. Just Google it if you don't want to use my code. But uh, yeah. If you enjoyed, uh, hit the like. Thanks for watching very much. The Backbone's a really good product, don't get me wrong. I love mine. I use it all the time. Um, I was recently on a plane and I played it the whole time, plugged it in the seat back. Okay, um, yeah. Thank you for watching and um, catch you in the next one. See ya.